Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Cal Poly Pomona and in this lesson we are going to talk about decision trees with utility function. Now that we are familiar with the concept of utility function, we would like to know how we can apply utility function on decision trees and instead of being risk neutral, make decision under uncertainty with respect to our behavior toward risk. To explain how we can apply uh, utility function in the context of uh, decision tree, I would like to go back to the very first decision tree example that we covered in the class, and that's a Colaco marketing example, which is from uh, Winston Wayne Operations Research textbook in the chapter related to decision tree and decision making under uncertainty. In this example, we learned that the Colaco company has a current asset of $150,000, and they want to decide whether to market a new type of soda which is chocolate flavored and for this pur uh, purpose they have three alternatives. Their first alternative was to go ahead and do a local marketing and based on the result of the local market uh, they can make a more educated decision on whether to market their new flavored soda in the national level or not. Obviously for this alternative they have to pay extra uh, money to conduct their local study. Their second alternative was to immediately go ahead and uh, market nationally without doing the local testing. Their third alternative was without testing the market decide not to market the new product in a national level. And we had some information regarding the probability of success and failure. So if they do not run the market study and uh, based on historical data, they can determine that 55% they have a chance of being uh, nationally successful and 45% chance of being nationally uh, unsuccessful. Now, if they do a local study, they have to uh, pay some amount, of course, but it, it allows them to make a more educated guess and probably it will impact their chances of failure and success in the national level. So the next piece of information that we had, it says if they become successful in the national level, then their current asset position is going to increase by $300,000 and if they fail in the national level, they're going to lose $100,000. Also, if they do a market study, they have to pay $30,000, but there is a 60% chance that the result is going to be favorable to, for them and 40% chance that the result of the local market is going to be unfavorable with regard to national marketing. If the result of the marketing is successful, then there is 85% chance that the company is going to be successful in a national level. And if the result of the local study is unfavorable, then there is only 10% chance that the company will be successful in a national level. And our objective is to define what strategy the company have to follow. The very first time that we went over this example, we solved it with the consideration that the company is risk neutral, meaning that they purely make a decision based on the expected value of their outcome. When we solve this problem without consideration to risk, we started with two decisions at the outset test the market and do not test the market, then if we test the market, the result is going to be success or failure with 60% chance for success and failure 40%. Then if you're locally successful, we can make a decision on whether to market nationally or not. The same decision applies if the result of the uh, local study is a failure. You still have to make the same set of decisions. And after that, if we test the market and we are locally successful in we decide to market nationally, then in this case, the actual result might be success or failure after uh, our implementation of national marketing. So you're going to have national success and national failure with 85% uh, and 50% chance according to the information that is given in the problem statement. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this decision tree since once we covered that before. So that was the final decision tree with consideration of all the costs that it's going to incur uh, for the company in the end. So depending on one, what path you take to each branch, uh, you end up de de deciding how much cost or profit you're going to have in the end. For example, if you test the market, you have to pay $30,000 and your current asset position is 
um, $150,000. So if you do the test the market and do not market nationally, you end up with 150 minus 30, which gives you 120. So if you go from the upper branch, you test the market and you're nationally successful, so you have 150k and then you earn 300k because you're successful and you deduct 30k because you paid for the test of the market and that becomes your final uh, asset position. If we had gone backward in this decision tree using the expected value, we would end up with making the decision of do not testing the market and go ahead and uh, directly uh, market in a national level. And this is because we make this decision with without regard to the chances of success or failure and we are purely looking into expected values. Basically we are risk neutral. It means that we don't have a risk taking or risk averse uh, type of behavior to make this decision. Now let's c uh, consider a scenario where we have some behavior toward risk. Now suppose that we have some risk averse uh, behavior. Basically we're trying to avoid risk as much as possible. In the, in the optimal decision that we have selected without regard to risk, you see that there is a 45% chance that the current asset position of the company becomes $50,000, which is a re relatively uh, high chance of having a very small final asset position. On the other hand, uh, when we look at the testing the local market and actually actually becoming a national failure, uh, there is a very slight chance that our current asset position is going to be less than $100,000. So let's, instead of looking at the expected value, in this case, looking at the decision making with regard to the risk of their utility function. So in this case, everything is going to be very similar to the previous case where we had the expected value. However, this time, instead of taking into account the actual values, we want to apply the utility of those values and we do everything else exactly the same way that we did before. So instead of considering the actual expected values, we consider the expected utilities to make our decision back into the decision tree. Obviously, every time we choose the highest utility to be the most preferred outcome. So. Suppose that these utility numbers are given, so you can calculate these uh, utility value according to the information that is provided. So it says the utility of 420k is 99%, utility of 20k is 0, utility of uh, 120 is 0.4, which we put here, utility of 450k is 1, and utility of 50k is 0.19. Also, you have 150, and that utility is 0.48. So this utility numbers is given to you in the problem statement. So if the question is where we got these numbers from, it's given in the problem statement. You either have a function that you use to calculate these values, or they are just given at certain points that you can use to calculate. So what I need to do is very similar to the previous scenario. I have to calculate the expected utility at each node. Uh, so I bring the first three nodes and calculate the expected utility. So this one, for example, is going to be 0.99 multiplied by 85 plus 0 multiplied by 0.15. That gives me this expected utility. I do the same process for node 2 and 3. I'm putting back on the decision tree here. So I know that I just calculated these three points, expected utility. And now I want to make a decision between these two. Between 0.4 and 0.84, obviously this is a better option. So this is where I put a hash mark to define that I chose this decision and I write this value on top of my decision because this is the expected utility associated to the decision I make. And then same thing here between these two, Point, uh, point 0.4 has a higher utility, so do not mark it nationally would be my decision, and I have to write point 0.4 on top of the box or somewhere next to it. Um, in this case, also between point 0.48 and point 0.6355, point 0.6355 has the highest value, so that would be my decision. I write it somewhere next to the box. Now I have to make a decision between these two nodes to come back to the roots of the tree. However, this is an event node and I need to calculate the expected value here. So let's calculate the expected value of the utility for node 4, which is equal to multiplication of this value by this probability and this value and this probability, which gives you 0.6649. So I write that back on the node. Now between these two, I have to make a decision which one has the highest utility. Obviously testing the market has the highest utility. So you see that when I have a risk averse 
a utility function which applied to my assets in the end, when I backtrack and make a decision, I end up testing a market as opposed to the risk neutral scenario where we picked do not testing the market. Okay, so let's see what is the final decision in this case. It's going to be testing the market, and if the result is successful, you go ahead and market nationally. However, if the result is a failure, you do not market nationally. So based on what happens from your local market analysis, you decide whether to go ahead and do a national marketing or just stop there and uh, avoid further loss to the company. As you see, when we apply utility function and we project people's behavior toward risk, our decision is going to be completely different from the case that we make the decision without regard to the chances of success and failure. Obviously, in this scenario, if we do not do the uh, marketing test, you have a 55% chance of success, which in comparison with this case where you're locally successful and you decide to do the market nationally, you have a much higher chance of being a successful company down the road. For that reason, if you're a risk averse person, you have a higher preference on the first branch as opposed to the second because the sample information that you gathered from this local study is going to give you a more educated uh, decision toward your success uh, down the road. With this, our lesson has concluded. Please refer to your blackboards for your assignments. Thank you.